I've been using the Logitech Creative Console for a few months now, and I'm still developing my opinion, but I have mixed feelings on it. Let's start with what even is the Creative Console. So it's kind of like an Elgato Stream Deck, except it comes with this control dial pad as well that has functions that change depending on what program you're in, as do the buttons. So they marketed this initially with the Adobe suite of software. It came with profiles for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere, and more. Now it's been updated to work with things like Final Cut Pro as well, which is my editor of choice. So I've been trying to use it and figure out how it fits into my workflow. If I'm not in an app that has a profile specific to it, I do just have one page of apps on there. And in the top row, I use those three buttons when I sit down to record one of these videos. The first button turns on my Do Not Disturb Focus Mode in Mac and iOS. The second button opens my GarageBand file template video, is what I call it, to record my audio inside of GarageBand. And the third button is for the Focusrite control application, so I can more easily manage the um, unit with more precision than I can on device. So those three things open up and then I'm pretty much ready to go start recording. I've used this to try to keep the menu bar a little bit cleaner on the Mac system, so a little bit less applications in there, things that I don't use as often. So in a way, this acts like an application launcher for me. Now, I've really been into Raycast lately, so Raycast itself does a really good job of that, and so I'm finding um, less times I'm reaching to push the button on the control pad and more so just heading into Raycast it's a little bit easier if my hands are already on the keyboard. I don't have to move. It's more efficient that way. But in the second row, I have Photoshop in the middle, the Logitech Options app, so I can configure this thing how I want. As I use it more and more, I start to think about shortcuts in Final Cut Pro or Photoshop that I might want to use to make my work more efficient. Then on the right of the middle row is Logic Pro, which I don't use all that often because I Despite owning Logic Pro, I still like recording things in GarageBand for now. It's kind of, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it, and do what you know sort of situation going on there for me. Lastly, on the bottom row, I've got a Finder window button, a screenshot button, and emoji picker. So again, all of these things, as I start to use Raycast more, tend to be more efficient in Raycast, but um, for now, this is how I have the home screen set up. So the next question you ask is, well, does this thing really save you time? Well, kind of, right? At least the top row when I am sitting down and getting ready to record, having it do all those things, which I probably could set all three of those actions up to a multi-action one, one button press thing, but I haven't gone through that effort yet to figure that out. It definitely saves me time rather than having to go click Do Not Disturb, uh, open GarageBand, find the file, which is usually in recents, so it's not that bad, but it's a couple clicks. And then again, finding the Focusrite control panel to open that up as well. So from that perspective, it definitely saves me time, but um, there's an investment with these things that I find that if you don't make the initial investment to figure out how you are gonna use the device and what sorts of shortcuts and actions you can program into it that make it beneficial to you, then it might not be worth it. I think Photoshop is the best example for me that I can give for how it saves me time because I've complained in other videos before Photoshop versus Pixelmator. In Photoshop, the menu system is still old and clunky. You have to do multiple clicks to get things done. So a few things that I use all the time when I'm in Photoshop. Locking and unlocking layers is great to have. So I have a page with a couple of these things, especially if I'm making a thumbnail. I wanna lock the background so I'm not moving it around or adjusting it accidentally as I'm clicking um, effects for other layers. And then exporting has always hurt my head why I still have to go up to file export and there isn't a button to do that for me. So. I have a quick export as PNG button, which is one click. PNG, usually small enough to get into the YouTube thumbnail, two megabyte or less range. If not, another one button click, 
export as to bring that window up. So that definitely saves a few clicks or uh, time spent hunting through the menu to get to those options for me. Other things that I've used is like masking and selecting different tools. It is nice to be able to, once you kind of get into the groove of having your, for me, it's on the left hand side. So my left hand can push some of the buttons for um, the Photoshop profile. The right hand is obviously moving the mouse around, controlling things on screen. So I definitely think in the Adobe products, it saves a lot of time and is a no brainer. If you're still using Premiere Pro, or if you use Lightroom Classic, it's definitely a no-brainer. Unfortunately, there isn't support for Lightroom CC, or I don't even know what they're calling the, the Creative Cloud Suite synced version of Lightroom anymore. It's just called Lightroom, but it's confusing to people who might use Lightroom Classic. There isn't a profile for the new just Lightroom. So that's a little bit disappointing. I do like to use that version with the cloud sync. Hopefully they can get that added in the future because I would really like this dial thing, I think, for editing photos, um, especially with the quick wheel setup that they have. So I mentioned Final Cut is now on the device as a profile. Is it even useful in Final Cut? Yeah, sort of. I think most of us that have been using Final Cut for a while have gotten this down with keyboard shortcuts. The few things that I do use, there is an auto retime button. So clicking these 60 frames per second B-roll shots and a one button shortcut on the Creative Console to set it to 50% speed is definitely helpful. That saves me the shortcut of Command R to bring up the retime and then either dragging or the couple clicks to get it to 50%. I like that a lot. And then adding a title, I've set my default title to an adjustment layer in Final Cut like many people have. So uh, a one button click while my mouse is in the right spot on the timeline to get a title above the clip has been really helpful as well. I also have insert gap set up as a quick key, and that's not something I use all the time, but every once in a while I want the magnetic timeline to act more like a layer-based editor. And so the insert gap is a good way to tie multiple things to the main timeline. And then a few odds and ends, keys that I you know don't remember the keyboard shortcut for, or sometimes can't figure out how to do with just the mouse, like nudging a clip left or right to get the audio timing in the right spot is usually how I use that. Those are also useful as well. I haven't tried this out with DaVinci Resolve, but what I was kind of hoping was that this would act more like a speed editor, except for Final Cut Pro. And I, it definitely misses the mark there for me, but I do still think it has uh, a usefulness. Not quite sure so far of the dial. I haven't figured out how to work that into my workflow. I kind of have it set up right now to do um, color grading, which I don't do a whole lot of, but occasionally I update the color wheels. I mess with the highlights and the shadows and the global, mainly to get the lighting in the right place. I'm not doing too much heavy color grading in Final Cut Pro. Now compare this with just getting an MX Master 3S mouse, which is my mouse of choice. And I've had these buttons and profiles set up on the MX Master 3S for a long time. I've had a Final Cut profile where the forward and back buttons on the side trim the start and end of clips. I am a big user of the side scroll wheel for scrolling the timeline back and forth. And of course the scroll wheel on top that does either the clicks or the free scrolling has been a feature that I've long loved on the MX Master series of mice. So between my normal keyboard shortcuts and the shortcuts on the MX Master, not just in Final Cut, but in all uh, other applications across the Mac OS ecosystem, with the profiles on the mouse, I never really noticed the lag because there's no visual between these two things. On the Creative Console itself, going in and out of Final Cut Pro or if I'm going back and forth Final Cut Pro to browser or Final Cut Pro to my notes to take notes or a shot list over to the notes app, I definitely notice the lag of the system because it's trying to go from the Final Cut Pro profile over to 
uh, you know, just its regular home profile. And when you go back, there's a little bit of lag as well because you can't see that on the mouse. You know, I just assume that it isn't happening. It may still happen, but you know, I go back and forth between Notes and Final Cut Pro and the browser, and I don't ever really notice uh, missing functionality. You know, like I switched a window too fast and then push a button on the mouse and it didn't do what I wanted to wanted it to do. So like I said, I think this thing is worth it if you're in the Adobe ecosystem. I know the cool thing right now is people fleeing Adobe, but I do still like and use Photoshop and Lightroom, and I don't really see myself leaving anytime soon. So I've made this console work for me for my workflow for now. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you seen any other great uses for the MX Creative console? Thanks for watching. Until next time. Later.